Hi, I'm Chris Roberts. A little over 10 years ago, amid the onslaught of Kickstarters, a gaming project would be announced that would come to be the most expensive game in history. This project would popularly be known as Star Citizen, but the real jewel, the straightforward goal of the project, was to deliver a cinematic, narrative space adventure game the likes of Wing Commander. This was Squadron 42. Let's talk about it. Thank you for coming to my Tomato Talk. Squadron 42, just like Star Citizen, has been largely in development since 2013. And like Star Citizen, its development was hampered by an early, ever-expanding scope and no real game engine to run it with. So the company has over the last 10 years been developing the Star Engine. What was originally CryEngine has been changed at its core. It is worth noting Chris Roberts, the founder and CEO, originally said that starting from complete scratch would have added two extra years to development. So take with that what you will. But the expansions we can see now are quite obvious, from the rendering system to the 64-bit coordinate system, object container streaming, cloud simulations, planetary biome generation, and intensive object interactivity. Not to mention all the networking stuff they've added. Over the course of these years, I've covered these changes to the engine in detail, but ultimately the time and money taken has built up a rather powerful and robust system of tools that can power Star Citizen and Squadron 42, and possibly beyond. But beyond this engine development, despite the game development being funded by ships made for Star Citizen, the majority of time and money in feature development went towards Squadron 42. As the company grew, it went from just a dozen at its inception to over a thousand in recent years. But as development continued, a higher percentage of that group was dedicated to the game in closed development, not the one players were actually testing, Star Citizen. This is partially because the game is easier to achieve. It can release earlier, and it helps to fund continued development for Star Citizen. But the main reason for this development emphasis is the persistent nature of Star Citizen. Anything developed in Star Citizen takes this method of small incrementation over the course of a couple of years with tweaks and fixes thrown in here and there. This can be very difficult, so diverting most efforts to developing a game in a more traditional way was decided to let Squadron 42 progress, grow, and reach a more polished level mostly unseen by the public and unbothered by our... feedback. This has been a source of some anger and anxiety for a long time, but from what we've seen, it may pay off for the game. But things aren't so certain. Many watching have probably been paying enough attention already to know about the single-player counterpart to Star Citizen. Many probably also remember a few references to a private beta back in 2019, or a claim that the game could be played all the way through even earlier. There have been some lackluster communication and management decision making in regards to this game, going all the way back to the original 2014 launch date, and then the 2016 launch date. This game has certainly struggled at times. So here is Squadron 42 a deep cinematic space action adventure story that focuses on ship combat. FPS combat and puzzles, and the social aspects of military life. You serve as a rookie Navy pilot with some promise under a grumpy Luke Skywalker in better gear. Who the hell are you? And follow a mid-length military campaign in two highly contested star systems, Vega and Odin. So while this is part of the Star Citizen universe, it takes place in a different part of human space at a different time than we're playing in Star Citizen. And while it takes place, you're meant to be fighting pirates and outlaws, but also a new threat that returns to mix things up at the beginning of the game. During this journey, you'll be taking part in spaceship dogfighting across a range of ships, FPS encounters across various planets, while spacewalking, around industrial facilities, on space stations, and everywhere else in between. Physics-based puzzles and platforming encounters make a pretty big statement, and interactions with the large crew of your home vessel, the Idris, with more than 70 unique NPCs you can interact with on board. That's ready some extra ice packs out of storage. Whenever gunners are on full rotation, you can always count on at least one of them getting hurt. A large variety of sci-fi settings, heavily inspired by the 70s and 80s that inspired the original Wing Commander series, and what is expected to be a very cinematic narrative delivered by some of the most famous actors in the world. It looks to be a very comprehensive story for those couched in sci-fi, and it may even be able to appeal a bit more to the casual crowd given the gameplay systems being added. And there are a lot of systems. Squadron 42, much like Star Citizen, is meant to be a very interactive and tactile game. 
physically touching and moving things has always been a key goal. And when that isn't an option, the small details are still considered. Are you reloading from your waist or your backpack? Did you just use a med pen? Well, you better watch your blood drug levels and avoid an overdose. If you want to put your helmet on, you're actually going to have to be putting it on your head, not just pressing a button. And if you don't take care of your weapons, they can get dirtier and eventually possibly jam during a firefight. Despite these more in-depth features, the game does seem to be aiming for a slightly hardcore but mostly still arcadey style of gunplay, with things like sliding and easy ammo management, reminiscent of Battlefield but with more depth. But this isn't just a shooter. As I mentioned, puzzles and environmental challenges are actually making a pretty big appearance across the game. You'll have zero-g segments that might require creative use of tools or different thinking, interactive hazards that block your path, and even social environments that may require a bit more finesse. Your multi-tool offers a lot of functionality with a tractor beam that acts kind of like a gravity gun, and platforming will be used across various set pieces. And of course, you'll be spending a lot of time in spaceships, among wingmen, out on your own, meeting with officials, in combat scenarios for travel, and even just exploring. While the company has managed to build fully realized, completely seamless planets for us to visit, you'll still be spending a lot of your time in space. So what exactly is the goal of all this time in space? Well, generally the idea is to deal with the Van Duel. That's that faction I said shows up towards the beginning of the game. It's a nomadic and tribal species of 8 plus foot tall lizard folk that acquires and repurposes the technology of other species. So they can get pretty technologically advanced, and they aren't huge fans of us. The game opens up with you joining Admiral Bishop and a major naval battle group to repel a raid by the alien faction. This event begins a new hot war, which you'll be dragged into joining Squadron 42 and linking up with your new wingman, Steve Colton. It really shows how far we've come. From there, you'll be meeting and interacting with a huge cast of characters, some whom you may be familiar with. Andy Serkis, Gillian Anderson, Mark Hamill, Henry Cavill, Sophie Wu, and Liam Cunningham, just to name, well, several. It's a hefty cast, and if you ever played the Wing Commander series, you know you can expect it to pursue a more cinematic experience. Chris Roberts really likes to emphasize that, and the company reflects that through its gameplay and cinematic presentation. So while I expect some interesting gameplay, great ship combat, and some beautiful graphics, it'll be the storytelling and presentation that really shoots to impress. A large-scale space epic with no visible loading screens. So what does this mean for you? Well, the game isn't coming out anytime soon. It's currently entering the polish phase, and as a company that likes to take its time and doesn't have the pressure of a publisher or a real release date, considering they are still building another game that funds the development, they're gonna take their time. If there's one thing that's proven true of CIG, it's that. I would guess this would come out in the next 24 months, but there are probably some reasons why that might not be true. So I'd just wait for more word. But that doesn't mean you can't get an idea of the game. Generally, I'm not one to suggest jumping into Star Citizen unless you are completely sure. But if you do want to get some idea of at least the design philosophy of these games, you can check out the MMO that's currently still in development. It suffers from its own bag of problems for sure, so be warned. In the multiplayer environment, there are a lot more things to consider when networking is factored in. So the game's not going to actually offer you anywhere close to what the Squadron 42 trailer shows in terms of stability and polish, but for $45, you can fly just about any ship in the game, go to any location, and do almost anything. While Squadron 42 is a military campaign, Star Citizen will introduce you to bounty hunting, cargo hauling, mining, salvaging, free exploration, and other sandbox styles of gameplay. Soon we'll be experiencing new raids and underground facilities that require us to steal cargo from large corporations, ship engineering gameplay that allows us to tweak, tune, and repair our ships in multi-crew fashion, and an expansion in the bounty hunting and cargo hauling professions. And this is all with 100 plus other people per instance. For now, they're looking to expand that pretty soon. Now that's all changing slowly over the next couple of years, but I have other videos for you that go into that. For now, what you need to know is Squadron 42 hosts the more finalized versions of the features seen in Star Citizen. Those features will be updated over time in Star Citizen, but for now, we are gonna be on older builds than what you've seen in those trailers. And while Squadron 42 will hopefully come out nice and polished in the next couple of years with a traditional release cycle, 
Star Citizen will continue to grow and change for many years to come, all while you can keep playing it. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it was a useful introduction to Squadron 42 for you, or at least got you up to speed on what is going on. There's still plenty to cover in the coming months and years as we approach release, but for now things are reportedly in a good place in the polishing and optimization phase. If you'd like to keep up with the progress and learn more, consider subscribing here and on my second channel, Space Tomato 2. And if you want to try jumping into Star Citizen, use the Join Tomato link below to get an extra 5,000 credits in your permanent account, and depending on the time, possibly a free vehicle in-game. I hope you learned something new in this video, and I'll catch you in the next.